morning, church, if you would stand with us as we sing and worship. And let's first go to the Lord in prayer. God, thank you so much for an amazing day that we can gather as your people and sing praises and honor and glory to you because there's nothing better that we could be doing this morning. There's nothing better than you, no one better than you. All of this is just, is for you. Uh, you're our everything, our strength, our power, our hope. It's all in you. And that's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's sing together. I search the world.
What's up, everybody? Welcome to the first Sunday that we get to worship the Lord in a new year. Isn't that a great blessing that we get to do that today? Amen. The only thing that would be better than that is if we were just face to face with him to get to do that. But this is a foretaste of what's coming. And I'm thankful that you're here today to worship the Lord with us. A lot of great things are happening here today. I've had a blast today. Uh, I'm actually off today. I'm not preaching. Um, Pastor Will is gonna be bringing the word and you're gonna be encouraged and challenged and blessed by God's word through him. Just go ahead and be praying for Pastor Will as he prepares to come and share God's word. Uh, but I joined the, uh, the, the greeting team today. I got to stand outside, out front and meet some people and I met, I met Titus and Hugh and saw some old friends and new friends and just having a ball getting to hang out with some people today. And it's just good to see your faces and I wanna welcome each and every one of you here today. When this service is over today, if, if I have haven't gotten to meet you yet, that's a joy to me to get to do that. And if you would give me that opportunity, I would be so thankful. I'm going to be out these doors and to the left after the service. And if you just want to come by and say, hey, this is who I am, I, I, that would be great for me. And I've got some hot apple cider out there if you've never been here before. So just drop by and we'll hang out for a few minutes. And I'd be happy and honored to get to serve you any way that I can. Also, I want to point you to our worship guide. I hope you got one of these when, when you came in. I know it's crowded in that hallway. And I, I I, I hope I'm not mean out there and say, hey, would y'all step back? Would y'all step over? Because it's just a good problem, right? It's a good problem. You've got so many coming out and so many going in. We're trying to navigate that as best we can. But I hope in that chaos, you were able to get one of these. And if you were, uh, there's a portion of that that's a tearaway part. And so if you have any questions, uh, if you have a prayer need, that's a great place to start. You could fill out as much of that tab as you would like to, and you can drop those in our offering boxes. Those are the little black metal boxes. There's one on each corner of the sound booth there, a couple of those out in the concourse also. There's a QR code, you can scan it, you can do everything electronically with that. You might even wanna sign up for our next membership class. January's class is full already, but we're signing up for February. So there's some space there. If you wanna jump in on that, we would be thankful. Uh, on the back of your worship guide, let me just walk you through quickly some things to pay attention to. We've got some mission trip opportunities coming up as a church family, and there's gonna be some meetings about some of those, and you see the information there coming up. That's on January 21st. Check that out. Most of those are outside of our community, but let me tell you about one that's not on here that's in our community. Circle the date. February 3rd, that's on a Saturday, we're gonna be hosting right here on our campus the Save a Life Walk for Life. And we're really excited about that. We love the ministry of Save a Life. We love to get to share the gospel and resources with uh, expectant moms and dads who have chosen life for their unborn baby. And so one of the ways and the primary way that Save a Life is funded every year is through their annual walk. And this is our first time to host it. Uh, everybody's gonna walk around the lake. It's gonna be a beautiful portrait of the body of Christ coming together to do kingdom work. And I don't want you to miss that. I'd love for you to support it, participate in it, walk in it, be present there. So just know that date. We'll get you some details about that information in the coming days, okay? Wednesday nights, we're in full swing again. So there's Bible studies for everybody from, from that brand new baby uh, to all the way up the spectrum. So 6.30 on Wednesday nights, hope you'll come and join us and be a part of that. And ladies, also on the worship guide, go ahead and make sure that you're making plans on Saturday, January 20th, to be here from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. for our women's conference called Lavishly Loved. You don't wanna miss that, so uh, be praying toward that and preparing to be a part of that. Uh, lots of fantastic things going on, but I am so thankful that you've chosen on the first day of a new week on the first Sunday of a new year, the first activity that I wanna engage in is the gathering of the body of Christ to worship the Lord. That's why we're here, amen? So will you stand with me as we just ask the Lord to meet us here in this place today? God, we're grateful for new mercies, for a new day, and, and even for a new year. And we're grateful, God, that we can gather here in this place as brothers and sisters in Christ, some who may not be in the family of God yet, but they're seeking and they're here because Holy Spirit, you're working in their hearts, you're drawing them, you're speaking to their hearts. And I'm grateful, I'm excited about that. Lord, for everything that you are aiming to do in this place and in our hearts and our lives in this moment, God, we're grateful. We're grateful, God, that you're for us. 
that you even think of us. Your heart is set on us for what is for our good and for your glory. So Holy Spirit, we pray that you would awaken our hearts and our minds today. Thank you for Pastor Will bringing the word. God, I pray that it wouldn't be Will that we hear today, but God's word through him. I thank you for Drew. I thank you for our worship ministry team leading us today. I thank you that Pastor Mike and I just get to sit in the congregation today and be a part of the body of Christ from, from those seats today. That's good and it's refreshing and I'm thankful that there's so many people here, God, that you've called and you've gifted and you've equipped to serve. So I pray you're, you'd bless those folks doing that from the nursery to teaching and hospitality, God. It's just amazing to see how you manifest who you are through so many lives in so many ways. God, our hearts are full today. You're so good, you're so faithful. There's not enough words in the human language to describe who you are, but God, we will try. Through these songs we're about to sing, we will try. God, we love you. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory. We pray all this in Jesus' good name. And all God's people say
sing this in Christ alone. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song is God's. Happy New Year, church family. We are here, 2024. Man, it's hard to believe. A lot of times when I was getting ready for this message and just thinking through 2024, I can remember as many of you can, it seemed like just yesterday we were preparing for Y2K, right? I mean, we were like, oh no, what's gonna happen? And we woke up January 1st and we're like, all right, there's not an airplane on my house and we're still here, so everything must be okay. I mean, but then time flies. I mean, here it is, almost a quarter century later, 2024. But here we are, nonetheless, January, a new year, a new beginning, uh, new habits ready to be formed. And our minds often this time of year think about, all right, what have I been doing? Looking back, reflecting, which is a good thing. What, what do I need to do different this year? What are some things I need to get rid of? What are some things I need to do differently? Uh, it's, it's a new beginning. It's a fresh start. 
almost kind of, God gives us a, a, a redo, so to speak. All right, here's a new chance for you. Well, as Christians, I believe it's important that we wrap our minds around, we understand that the God that we serve, he's a God of new beginnings. Now, God himself is eternal. Let's make no doubt about that, right? He is never, he's not created. He's always been and forever will be. And when you try to really focus in on that, you, your, your brain can explode because he's eternal God. He's infinite, but we're finite. But he's a God of beginnings. I mean, you go to the very beginning of the scriptures in Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God, Elohim, almighty creator God. He orders and structures all of creation for his grand purposes, his perfect will, his plans, his purposes. He's a God of beginnings. And then we dig into the scripture in the Old Testament. We look at the history of things and we see a cycle, really, of beginnings. Go to the Garden of Eden. After the fall, God gives Adam and Eve a new beginning. It's different than before, right? There's consequences. Things are not like they once were. But nonetheless, there's a, a new beginning. And not long after that, we come to the flood and God hits the reset button on all of creation. And, and after that, another new beginning. In our timeline that Pastor Joel leads our kids through oftentimes, we've, we come to the Tower of Babel. And he says, that's the beginning of the nations. A, time, a marker in history of new beginnings. God also choosing his people, Israel. And we see it when we study the scriptures that it was a cycle, again, of, of beginnings for them. They would follow the Lord for a time and then they would turn away uh, from truly following the Lord. And then God would send them a, a prophet or, or a judge even to correct them and to call them to repentance and, and they would establish a new beginning, a repentance of sorts. And so God is a God of new beginnings throughout scripture, uh, throughout all of his history that he has for us. Then we come to the New Testament. The ultimate new beginning. The, the, the new beginning for all of humanity, all, all of creation, really. We come to Christ. The new covenant we have in Christ. Hebrews 12, 24 says, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant. We have, the old is gone, the old is set aside. Now, we have a new covenant in Christ. All of history hinges on this one historical event, Christ coming to the earth. We just got through celebrating that at Christmas time, right? That God stepped into, into humanity and sent his son. And he was born of a virgin. All the things that we just talked about and we sang about and we celebrated. But like Pastor Joel mentioned the other day, Christ came to this earth to die. He came so that we would have a new beginning, a new life in him. And so we see this hinge point in all of history. In God's sovereign plan for salvation, Christ came and made a new covenant through his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And that brings us to us today, the church. Really, whoever puts their faith and trust in Christ then becomes a part of the church, the body of Christ. Grace Life, we're a small part of the body of Christ. But nonetheless, we are a part of that body. We're made new, we have a new beginning in Christ. The old is gone. And the followers of Christ that have put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ follow through in what we call believer's baptism. Again, it's, it's a, a beautiful picture, it's a symbol of what Christ has done in our life, right? We, we do that in the baptistry or, or out in the lake if you're really brave. And um, it, it's a beautiful picture. There's nothing magical about the waters, right? I mean, it's tap water, it's muddy lake water, but it's the picture, it's the symbol of what Christ has done, this new beginning, right? We're, we're dead in our sin, but yet we're, we're buried with Christ, but we're raised to walk a new beginning in a new life, a different life. The old is gone, the new is now come, this new life in Christ. Romans 6, 4 tells us that we were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Newness of life. And so for, again, for those of us that put our faith and trust in Christ as our Savior, we experience this new beginning, this newness of life. And then for the follower of Christ, the, the hope doesn't stop there. Revelation 21 verse five tells us, and he who was seated on the throne said, behold, I am making all things new. This future event, this event yet to come when Christ makes all things new. 
Man, that's where our hope lies. Our hope is not in this world. Our hope is not in anything. Our hope is in the God of new beginnings. Our God of new beginnings. You see, until that time comes when we are taken home, when he comes back again and and takes us uh, to heaven to be with him forever. But until that time comes, we're called to live, to walk in this new life. Life here, in this broken world. And we're reminded all the time of the brokenness. Right? I mean, even in your own life, you may have everything together. All your bills are paid, your heat's working, everything's good. But, but the older you get, even getting out of bed is painful. You're reminded of the brokenness, right? Or doing things that you once didn't even think about. All you're going, man, it didn't used to hurt to walk across the living room. Now it does. What? Or we flip on the TV and we see the brokenness portrayed everywhere. We just drive down the road and, you know, leaves change color and they fall off, die. There's dead. I mean, again, we're not have to, we don't have to look far to be reminded of the brokenness in our world. But again, we serve a God of beginnings. He redeems the brokenness in our lives for his glory. I'm not sure what all you've experienced in 2023 or what you will experience in 2024. There's gonna be trials. Some of you guys had the worst year of your life. You're walking through a valley of a shadow of death. Even, maybe even now this morning, you're here and you're going, it just took everything I could to get out of bed this morning. And we don't know what lies ahead. Again, we're not promised an easy life. In fact, just the opposite. Jesus tells us, you will have trials in this life because it's broken. We see the effects of sin. And Satan uses these things to try to destroy us. But God can take them and redeem them for our joy and for our glory, or for his glory and our joy, making us more like the character of Christ, strengthening our faith as we walk through those trials with Christ, with God. And this is what the Christian worldview is all about, is living our lives here and now through a Christian worldview, through what God's word says, who we are. Not who we are in the world, who we are in Christ. Not how the world says you're identified, but how Christ has identified you. You see, apart from Christ, God's word tells us that we are enemies of God. Now, we don't like to think it like that, right? Oh, we're all God's children. It's not what the Bible says. The Bible says if you are friends with the world, in other words, if you're not part of Christ, you're God's enemy. And as God's enemy, you're subject to his wrath, his justice. But in Christ, there's new beginning, there's new life, right? We go from being God's enemy to God's child. In Christ alone, like we just sang, there's life, there's a new beginning, And again, the Christian worldview tells us that everything we experience in life is we filter it through with that relationship now, the relationship that we have in Christ, giving us life through the cross of Christ. Not not just an ordinary life, but a life in Christ. We have peace with God now, no longer his enemy. We're no longer a slave to sin. Again, these sins that Hebrews tells us easily entangles us. The sins that we get up and have to go to war against every day. And it is warfare. I think too often we take sin lightly in our life. We don't treat it the way God calls us to treat it, to, to hate what is evil. And these sins, they entangle us too often. But yet in Christ, we're no longer a slave to those sins. We're a slave to righteousness, living in a right relationship with God, seeking things, being intentional with our life. Lord, what do I need to do today to please you? What do I need to stop doing that in the old way? And now that I'm in this new life, how do I need to focus my life in a way that pleases you? Living today with purpose, with eternal purpose. So many in our world are searching for that purpose. Why am I here? What, what's this all about? What am I supposed to be doing? And these are good and right questions to ask ourselves, right? We should be seeking out the, the why. Some go as far as say, God, why are you allowing me to go through this experience? Why are you allowing this to happen? Again, right questions. We don't always get the answer to that question. But overall, God has given us the purpose of why we're here, to bring him glory. To whatever we walk through in this life, whatever the circumstances, child of God, we're called, our purpose, our eternal purpose is to live for his glory, to make much of him. But yet our world has flipped that upside down. It's all about you. Make much of you. Think about you. And God said, nope. Follow me, deny yourself. 
take up your cross and follow me. We're gonna make much of him. And then ultimately, he will make all things new. He will pour out his justice and his wrath on all those who rejected him because he's a holy God. But for those who put their faith and trust in him, he will make all things new. No more sin, no more pain, no more suffering, no more disease, no no more shortness of breath, no, no more hurt. It's hard to even wrap your brain around that because we can't. All we've known is brokenness. But God is a God of beginnings and he will make all things new in eternity because he is a God of beginnings. What about you today, sitting here, January 2024? Have you experienced that new beginning? Have you been made new by the blood of Christ? Have you entered into that relationship with Jesus Christ? I didn't ask you when were you baptized. I didn't ask you if you go to church. I didn't ask you if you were spiritual or religious or all those other things. Have you entered into a relationship with Jesus? All these other things don't matter unless you have that relationship. That's why we call it believer's baptism, right? If you're not a believer, you're just getting wet in front of a bunch of people. You gotta be a believer, right? Coming to church doesn't save you. Having your name on a Grace Life membership doesn't save you. It's that relationship with Jesus Christ that saves us in him alone, like we just sang. Have you put your faith and trust in him as your savior and your Lord? He's your savior, but also he wants to lead you and guide you. Are you walking in this new life that only Jesus can give? Are you trying to keep one foot in the world and one foot in Christ? Jesus, I'll give you all of this, but, but I wanna hold on to this part of my life. It's not what the scriptures tell us. We surrender all, We've, we surrender fully. He will make all things new in this life. Or are you still trying to do it your way? Living life your way, you're telling God what he needs to do, right? Lord, if you'll just do it this way, I know it'll work out better. If you'll just give me this, my life, I'll be much happier. It'll go better for me, God, if you do this. I often think God just sits back and chuckles a little bit going, oh, yeah, okay. Big boy, you think you gotta figure it out? You, you don't know half of it. Or, or we may treat God like a genie in a bottle, right? We, we figure it out and we try to do it on our own and then we can't figure it all out. We go to him with our three wishes and say, all right, now here's what I want you to do. Number one, do this. Number two. He's not our genie. He's almighty creator God. He's a holy God who loves you and has a new beginning for you. Maybe perhaps for the first time in your life, this morning, maybe even right now, the Holy Spirit is stirring your heart, helping you realize Maybe you've grown up in church, but you don't have that relationship. Maybe you're very religious. Maybe you serve in a ministry, but you don't have that relationship. You're going through the motions. You're playing the part. You, you look like, from the outside, you look like you have it all together. But on the inside, you're missing the most important thing, that relationship with Jesus Christ. Listen to him. He's calling to you to repent and to turn, to believe in Jesus. And believe not that he just exists, right? The demons believe that the devil knows very well that Jesus exists. It goes beyond that. It's believing him as your savior, that he came, he died, he took your place on the cross. He died as your sacrifice. But God raised him from the grave and defeated sin and death so that now whoever believes in him, we don't have to fear death, we will not perish will have eternal life in Christ. And to be saved, we simply believe. We simply believe in Jesus as our Savior and we make him Lord of our life. In other words, we begin to seek his will, not our will. We seek his will. And now that he's given us this new life, we wanna live our lives in a way that please him. And how do we know what pleases him? He's given us his word. He's given us his word, the Bible, that guides us to this kind of life. We're called to live according to the word of God as true followers of Jesus. And then we open these, the, the pages of this book and we study it. We either take it or we leave it. We don't get to pick and choose out of God's word what we wanna believe. It's all or nothing. And in spite of what our culture commonly tells us today, we don't get to change these words. We don't get to redefine what God has defined. It's not how it works. 
God's not going, oh, you know, that's a better way to do it. No. In the beginning, God, not man, God established it. His order, his way. And if we are truly a follower of Christ, we'll desire, we will want to line up our lives with his will and his word. And so we must study it and know it. And not just a head knowledge, but a life applied, the word, applying the word of God to our lives and to our heart, to what we believe, that biblical worldview. Everything that we view is filtered through the word of God. And this is true for all believers, whether you've been walking with the Lord for a day or for 50 years of your life or more. Our lives are to be fully surrendered to him, lining our lives up, our will up with his word. Now, too often we, we get distracted, you know, right? The, the shiny things of the world distract us or life gets busy and hectic and we begin to take our focus off of that and we move it other, other directions. But yet, there's times that God gives us to, to be reminded and to be refocused. That brings us to the second idea of this message. The first, the beginnings. God is a God of beginnings, right? The beginning of your life in him. Then we come to the second idea of balance. Balance, beginnings and balance. What I more specifically like to refer to as life balance. 1 Corinthians 10, 31 says, whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. Whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. Now, that word whatever, that's an all-encompassing word, right? There's a lot that falls under the category of whatever, which means God wants all of you. But for us living it out today, we have to kind of zero in on, all right, so what does that look like in my life today? in this area of my life, in this area of my life. So to make sure that we keep focus on the main thing in every aspect of our lives, I like to think of it this way, in that life balance in three specific areas, spiritual, physical, and mental. So so this is not like a balance of two separate things like you would see on a scale. It's more like a a three-legged stool. Look at this image that that we've got. So it's a three-legged stool, right? The spiritual, the mental, and the physical. And so you know, if you've ever sat down on a chair or a stool that's, that's not balanced, that's missing a, a whatever, a foot or something, it wobbles, right? You sit down on your table and you get the chair and you're like, oh, we got a wobbler here, right? And it's awkward. The whole thing doesn't work right. And you think about it, if, it's, if a leg, if you've ever sat on a three-legged stool and one of the legs breaks, all of a sudden you're lying down. You're not sitting anymore. So it's important to, that that three-legged stool is in right balance, So let's begin by looking at the first one, the spiritual. Now for the follower of Christ, the spiritual focus for our life really should be central. I mean, it's it's everything. Christ is central. But too often, we, we compartmentalize our life. Look at this next image. We take the things of life and we put them in the compartments. I have my my family life. And this is what I'm like when I'm around my family. And then I have my my Jesus life. So when I get ready for Sunday morning, I put on my good clothes and I brush my teeth for that week, you know, and I get everything together like I like it and I go to church and, hey, brother, how you doing? I'm doing great, man, God bless. Hmm. We have our Jesus box. Then we go into our, our work box. And I'm, a, and I'm a different person when I go to work. And then I've got my hobby box and I've got my future box. When I'm thinking about my future plans and, and, and we, every now and then, though, we might sprinkle a little Jesus in that box. Lord, I'm going to work today, and if you don't intervene, I'm gonna kill that coworker. He's driving me nuts. Lord, I'd really love for you to help my 401k because I'm getting close to retirement. I need a little more in the bank account, if you know what I mean. So it'd be nice, God, if you jump into that box. And we compartmentalize what should be a relationship. The better picture, the more biblical picture of what we see in Scripture for the Christ follower is like this. Christ is central in our life. And because of that, then everything else we do in life filters through that. So how I'm a family member, how I'm a father, how I'm a husband filters through what God's word says. And how I'm a coworker or a boss or whatever I'm doing out in the world. My hobbies are shaped and filtered and focused through what God's word says. And my future lies in him. I'm trusting in him, not my 401k. And so God is central. Christ is central. Our relationship with him is everything. And it shapes who we are and what we do in this life instead of just having another box, another thing to do. Colossians 1, verse 15 through 17 says, He, Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. 
For by him, by Jesus, all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him, Jesus, all things hold together. If Christ is not central in your life, brother, sister, you're missing it. He's everything. Christ is central of all creation. He stands that he should be the center of our lives as well. Everything we do should flow through that relationship. We look to his word to shape our lives. So let me ask you some self-evaluation type questions just to help us ponder this, think through this. Again, we're, it's January. We're thinking through fresh start, new start, reset, new habits. What are you currently doing or what do you need to start doing in this new year to strengthen your relationship with Jesus? Let's look at Bible study. Are you making the time or taking the time to spend in, your word, in his word, in your Bible? If the only time you open up the Bible is on Sunday morning in this room or maybe in life group, if you're really spiritual, you're missing it. Man, we gotta walk in the word. We gotta know it. We gotta hide his word in our hearts so that we won't sin against him. Man, this is a miracle. We take this for granted too often. I, I've heard of stories of people laying their life down just to be able to, to get one page of scripture, being in prison, and the most valued thing they had was a smuggled piece of the Bible, and yet we have multiple copies sitting in our room collecting dust. We have to be people of the word. We have to spend time. It doesn't happen accidentally. You don't just wake up one day and go, oh, I memorized scripture last night while I was asleep. It doesn't work. It'd be nice if it did, but it doesn't work that way. We have to be intentional. Make time, make plans. What about church attendance? Coming to church? You're like, uh, Will, we're here. <laughs> I see you. No, yeah, you're here. Great, wonderful. But how you view church life? It starts with how you view the actual day, Sunday. Pastor Joel's touched on this before. If you view Sunday as the last day of the weekend, it's sort of that catch-all day. If, if we get everything else done in the week and we, don't, we have time left over on Sunday, then we'll go to church. Great, everything's done. That was good. Unlike, unlike the reality of Sunday should be the first day of your week, and then we're called to apply that stewardship principle to all of our life, giving God our first, giving God our best, right? Lord, I don't have to go to church. I get to go to church. I don't have to go to life group. If I don't go to life group, Pastor Joel's gonna call me out sometime. No, I get to go to life group. I get to share life with other people, other brothers and sisters. Now, let's be honest. That's a hard thing to do, right? I say it all the time in the membership class. Connecting in with people is a hard thing to do. If you're looking for a perfect church, keep looking because we're not perfect because you're here and I'm here. We're people, we're not perfect, we're, we're broken, right? And so even further, stepping in that small room and that small group of people, man, somebody, you're gonna sit down and you're gonna sit there one day and go, uh, he shouldn't have said that. Why is she saying, and it may be you saying that thing, somebody be thinking about you. And so sharing life with people is difficult. I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. Relationships are hard. But yet, in the body of Christ, we're called, we're commanded even, to share life together, to love one another, to encourage and admonish one another. And we do that, we can't do that on our own, right? Our church covenant speaks to this, right? By his gracious aid, by God's help, that we can share life together. How are you viewing your church life? Are you serving faithfully? Are you allowing God to use the talents and gifts that he's given you? Like we, just saw, we see it demonstrated week in and week out, the people that play the instruments or hand you a worship guide or rock your babies or whatever the case may be, they're, they're faithfully serving. What about you this year? How are you viewing your church life? What do you need to do in your weekly routine to keep Christ central, to keep the focus where the focus needs to be and filtering everything through that? What do you need to cut out of your week, perhaps? Something that's a distraction, Maybe not evil in of itself, but things that are clogging up the pipe, so to speak, that aren't allowing you to spend the right amount of time that you need to focus on your relationship with the Lord. And this is a time of beginning, a new year. 
you're probably already thinking and making the plans and um, time to refocus things and reprioritize. And while the spiritual focus should be central in our lives and shape everything that we do, the physical and mental focus are important as well. And this is where that balance comes in. If we neglect these other areas of our life, our spiritual life will be impacted. So let's look now at the next area of balance, this physical side. And and the Bible speaks to to this area, and we'll we'll unpack that. It's not just, okay, we're gonna step out of the spiritual box and we're gonna talk about some world stuff. No, this is the Christian worldview. It speaks to all of who we are in Christ. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Paul says, do you not know that your body, this physical body, is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own. You are not your own. This physical body is not yours. God has given it to you like other resources in your life to be stewarded, to be managed, to be used for his glory. Now, oftentimes when we think about stewardship, we think about our money, right? I gotta give God his portion. (laughs) It's all his, right? Uh, I gotta give God some time. It's all his. He created it, right? But we steward our time and our treasure and our talent. But what about our physical bodies? God has given this to you as a resource to be used for his glory. 1 Timothy 4.8, Paul says bodily training is of some value. You see, we're only given one body. Now, some of you have added to your body. You've got you know, plastic parts and you've got some pig parts pumping things. And you've got, you know, it's amazing what modern science can do. It helps us along the way maintain this one body. But the reality is we're only given one. As hard as science tries you're not gonna be able to reproduce yourself again and again, right? You're given one. How are you stewarding it? How are you managing it? And this is very much a stewardship principle. How are you taking care of your body? Are you taking the necessary time to exercise and to move and to be moving around, to be active? Now, I'm not talking you have to become a you know, gym rat and be you know, puffed up like somebody stung you full of bees one day or whatever. You're not gonna be swole up. But just be healthy. Be mindful. I gotta take care of this shell, this jar of clay. Because God's given it to me. Because this balance, it can be out of balance either way. It can be out of balance where you're not giving enough time, enough focus. Or it can go the other way, that you're giving too much focus. If you go and spend hours and hours and hours in the gym, but yet you never crack open your Bible until Sunday, eh, something ain't right. We gotta get that right balance, that right approach. Go back to 1 Timothy 4, 8. For while bodily uh, training is of some value, godliness is of value every way, in every way, as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. So while the central and most important focus is Jesus, he's calling us to be good stewards of all that he has given us, including our physical bodies. So here we, are, we come to this time of year, right? It's January and those resolutions start flowing. Um, I heard on the radio this week, somebody talking about, man, how crowded the gym was this week. Yeah, the gym, the first three weeks of January, you can't hardly get on a machine. But then wait, give, give it a little bit, it'll taper off, right? That's how we are. But also when we sit in our mind, hey, I need to do better, I recognize I need to do better, the excuses start to come as well. Well, I just don't have time. You don't know how busy my schedule, I, just, I can't, work in anything else. I don't have time to work out. I don't have time to exercise. I promise you, we do what we wanna do. We do what's most important, right? And I know that because when those life big circumstances happen and our our life comes to a screeching halt, we find the time to be with family. We find the time to do what's most important. I promise you in a week, you can find 20 minutes to go take a walk. Or maybe instead of watching that 30 minute sitcom, you can watch a 30 minute exercise video. Well, actually do more than just watch the video. Get up and actually exercise with the video, right? Some of you, yeah, I watched three hours and nothing's happening. I don't know why. But what I'm saying is we take the time for what we want to do. <laughs> I can't afford a gym. Okay. I just happen to know of a little place. It's got a nice walking track around a beautiful lake. There's some outdoor exercise equipment. I mean, it's literally, you know, 100 yards that way. Grace Life, we are blessed with some great resources, physical things that we've given to you to be able to use to take care of your physical body so that you can be where God wants you to be, spiritually, physically, mentally. 
take that excuse off the table. Now, I'm really going to meddle here um, unapologetically. What about food? Some of y'all just checked out. <laughs> what about how you view food? Is it fuel or is it comfort? Man, if I can just get to the day and get home to little Debbie, all will be well, right? Sorry, Pastor Joel. It's how we view food. It can be a stumbling block. You know, <laughs> so we gotta be careful. And I'm not saying you can't enjoy food. Look, if you know me, you know I enjoy my groceries, right? I, I, mean, I enjoy sitting down to them. I love, especially when it's people involved and we go to a rice restaurant or whatever. And I love the ambiance, the fellowship, the food. Man, I just get, Brady makes fun of me because if I know we're going out somewhere with some people or whatever, I get giddy. He's like, calm down, it's a couple hours away. You know, I'm excited about it. I'm not saying we can't enjoy, we should enjoy. These are gifts from the Lord. These are blessings that we can enjoy. But in moderation, it can be very quickly become a stumbling block. So we gotta be careful. If the physical focus in your life is not in the right balance, then your spiritual life can be impacted, right? I mean, think about it. If if you're not well physically, if you don't feel good, you're not gonna get up and go to church. You, you know, you're not, or maybe you're not able to. And again, I'm not saying you have to be perfect and without sickness. The reality is we're gonna be broken. We're gonna get sick, right? There's gonna be times where we're gonna have accidents. We're gonna have surgeries and things that lay us up. But everything within our power, in our control that we can do in our life habits and our life balance, we ought to be doing it, taking good care, stewarding well the physical gift that God has given us. And this is a perfect time to refocus that, to be reminded and to kind of get things right in the right balance. So the other side, we have the physical, again, centered on the spiritual. We have the physical and now we have the mental. Now, unlike other religions that tell us to empty our minds, God tells us, no, engage your brain, use your mind. Philippians 4, 8 says, finally, brothers, whatever is true, Whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, what? Think. Think about these things. In other words, use that gray mush between your ears. Use your brain that God has given you to think on these things, meditate on them, search them out. God, is this pleasing to you? And what does it mean for my life? 2 Corinthians 10 5 says, Take every thought captive to what? To obey Christ. See, if, we, if we're not careful, we'll let our mind just wander, right? Maybe you don't. I do. My mind just wanders, right? Even now I'm thinking about food because I'm hungry, <laughs> right? Um, our mind can wander. We're called to take every thought captive to obey Christ. Engage your mind. What we think about matters. Balance is the key. We can also get out of balance when it comes to our mental focus, now, personally, I've never been accused of overthinking anything. Uh, usually it's the opposite. Hey, you need time out. You need to slow down. Think a little bit more about this. But the reality, what I mean by this is we, we, we tend to think on ourselves. We rely on ourselves too much. My own understanding. Right? The Bible even commends it. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways, trust in the Lord. But yet we oftentimes, if I just got to figure it out, just got to figure it out. Or or maybe we look to other sources outside of ourselves, other than God's word, like self-help books or other philosophies or other worldviews. We look, we search other places for answers instead of the one true God. Our world is full of these other places, other philosophies that quite frankly are, are simply distractions or even traps that the enemy has set for us. They distort the truth of God's word and cause even followers of Christ to, to lose focus. Paul warns us against these in Colossians 2.8. See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. Notice this verbiage. See to it that no one takes you captive. Right? When that mind begins to wander, it's like these other things come in and they kidnap us. They capture us and lock us down and we can't escape. Paul's saying, be careful. Because those false doctrines, those false philosophies, they're contrary to the truth. And we, we see it all around us. People whose lives are being held captive. Their mental focus is being held captive by these lies. These anti-Christ lies. So it's vitally important 
to our mental well-being, that we focus our attention on things that please the Lord, whether it's books, TV shows, programs that you watch, social media, whatever, whatever source of intake, we have to be mindful and ask ourselves, does this help me in my relationship with the Lord? Does this please the Lord? Does this line up with God's word? Or is it twisting God's word? Or is it flat out contrary to God's word? And so just like sometimes we need a physical trainer, to, we go to the gym and they say, all right, here's, here's your workout, here's your diet plan, whatever, a, to get your physical focus lined up. Sometimes we need a mental trainer or a counselor, somebody to help us. And, and I'm excited that here just recently at Grace Life, we've launched a counseling ministry and we have our very own Dr. Mindy, who's been a blessing to us already just in the few short months that she's been with us. And it's a great resource to our church family and really to our community as well that she will take God's word, right? Not the crazy psychology of the world, but she'll take God's word and say, all right, here's what God's word says. Now let's apply it to this certain situation that you're walking through. What is God's word? How does God's word shape you in dealing with this circumstance and this situation? She would love to meet with you if, if you would like. Simply you can start that by picking up the phone, giving her a call, shoot her an email. It's a great resource made available to our church family and we've made it very reasonable for you to help you and equip you in this mental focus. Our wrong thinking can have a great impact on our spiritual life as well as our physical life, right? We get, with that stinking thinking getting trapped in our minds, and, well, God's abandoned me now. God doesn't love me anymore. He, blah, 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 you know, we get to thinking wrong. Or we get to thinking in our physical side. Well, as long as my walk with Jesus is fine, it doesn't matter what I do with my physical body. That's not what God's word says. Right, We have to line up our thinking with what is the truth of God's word and get it in right balance. So it does matter. It matters. Our focus should be a well-balanced life based on what God's word says. Letting our focus filter through the powerful word of God in order to shape our spiritual, our physical, and our mental life. If your spiritual life is not right, then everything else in your life it's gonna be hurting, it's not gonna be right. So it begins with keeping Christ central. So here we are, January 2024, a new year, a new beginning. Now's a great time to self-evaluate, to take inventory, to take a checkup on yourself. How am I doing? See if changes need to be made. Maybe some drastic changes, maybe just some minor tweaks here and there. New commitments, new plans for this new year. Again, you gotta be intentional. You gotta make the plans. It's not gonna accidentally do better. We gotta be very intentional. So let's, I wanna kind of wrap this up with expanding on those self-evaluation questions with the spiritual focus. What are you doing each day to grow in your relationship, not your religion, but in your relationship with the Lord? When it comes to Bible study, prayer, fellowship with other believers, how are you viewing your church life? Are you committed? Maybe this year needs to be the year you get connected into a life group. Or maybe you need to be more consistent in actually coming to this location and gathering. Do you need to focus more time for the Lord? What does your morning routine look like? Maybe you need to stop doing something and add in some time with Jesus. You gotta make a plan. You gotta be intentional. It doesn't accidentally, you don't just wake up one day closer to the Lord. You gotta be intentional, making the effort to seek out his word. The physical focus. What are you doing each day to properly maintain your physical well-being? How do you view food? Is it fuel or junk? Again, I'm not saying, don't hear me say, Will hates Little Debbie's. No, Will loves Little Debbie's, right? I guarantee you, in maybe just 30 minutes or so, I'm gonna be at San Antonio Grill enjoying some cheese dip, right? I'm not gonna do that every day. I'm not gonna eat, drink the whole bowl, I might give Brandy and Aston a little bit if they behave themselves, right? But it's how we view that. We can enjoy the good things. We can enjoy little Debbie every now and then. But don't eat it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? It's how you view that. Moderation is the key. What about physical activity? Do you need to spend more time walking around the... And you can multitask. I love, you know, if you're not walking with somebody in fellowship, man, throw some earbuds in and, and praise Jesus the whole time you're walking. Lord, help me lift this up because it's really heavy right now. Just whatever you're doing, right? Focus it through your relationship with Christ, your mental focus. What are you doing to help maintain your mental well-being? Thinking on the things of the Lord, taking every thought captive. 
What are you reading, listening to, podcasts? Are you challenging yourself mentally? Or you just get home and you plug in, your, you, or you check out, you plug into that screen for the rest of the evening and, you, and before you know it, hours have gone by and you've had mindless entertainment. Again, I'm not saying you can't have mindless entertainment, right? I love movies, I love, the best thing are those movie theaters where you can sit down and eat a meal. Man, that's, that's hard to beat, right? Those are okay, but don't do that every day. And mindless entertainment has its place. But are you being intentional? Are you engaging your brain, your mind in the things of the Lord? Are you making sure what you're taking in pleases the Lord? So I wanna wrap this up with our focus of where it needs to be. And that's Jesus in Christ alone, right? He's got to be the center of our lives. After all, he's the center of all creation. I'm gonna close with this verse. And this is a verse that I kind of am adopting as my life verse for this year. Each year I try to focus on one verse and just memorize it, meditate on it, and carry it throughout the year. And this is my life verse for 24. Colossians chapter three, verse 15 through 17. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Man, we, too often we let other things rule our heart. Man, we let circumstances, we let good and bad, we let vacation, whatever, the things of this world we allow to rule our hearts. Let the peace of Christ, our salvation, our right relationship with the Lord, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. It sounds so simple. But yet too often we walk around like somebody just kicked our puppy dog. Child of God, brother, sister, we have so much to simply be thankful for. We've been saved. We've been given this new life. We get to gather in a place, I mean, a beautiful, wonderful place without the threat of persecution yet. But we have so much to be thankful for. It's that simple. Be thankful. And let the word of Christ dwell in you richly teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And church, we have a new beginning, a new year. Where's your focus? This verse These verses is the prayer for my life in 24. I'm praying it for you as well, that we would all understand and embrace this new beginning through Christ. And then we'd also find that right God-honoring life balance and steward well the resources that he has given us. And make no doubt about it, everything that we have comes from the Lord. It's his, we belong to him. We're called to steward it well. What are you doing today, this year, in the days to come to steward it well? Let's pray. Father God, we love you and thank you that you demonstrated your love for us in a way unimaginable. That you sent your son to die for us, to take our place. God, you've given us this new life in Christ if we simply believe, if we simply just put our faith in you and trust you as our savior and and make you the Lord of our life, God, you've given us this new life filled with peace and joy and hope. But too often we get distracted with the things of this world and our focus goes elsewhere. So Lord, let us, this time of year, especially Father, as we focus on this new year, let us make Christ center and keep Christ the center of our lives and let that dictate how we're a family member, a co-worker, everything in our life, God, is filtered through that reality of who we are in Christ. Thank you, God, that you've called us, you've saved us, and you walk with us. No matter what this year brings, Father, let us not walk in fear, but walk in faith and trust you. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand together and continue to worship. Let's focus on the one that's worthy, the only one that is worthy of our praise. And that's Jesus. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever
worthy of our applause. He alone is worthy of our being the center of our lives. Our focus is in Christ alone. He will not be shaken. No matter what you face in 2024, I pray that your faith is not shaken in Christ. 
Amen. Church, we love you. Have a great week. If your staff can help you in any way as you live out whatever God has for you this year, please don't hesitate to call on us. God bless you. See you next week.